In this video, we will continue to practice our basic integration techniques. This is the third video in the sequence, so if you have not watched the previous videos, you should probably watch them first. I'll put a link in this area in the upper right hand corner. Now throughout the video, I will be referring to the list of basic integration formulas. You might want to pause your screen and write these down if you have not already done so. So here's one set of basic integration formulas, but if we scroll down, okay, pause your screen again, here's some more. So we will be referring back to these throughout the lesson. Sometimes I will use the word integrate, but sometimes I will say find the antiderivative. Those mean exactly the same thing. Let's rewrite this problem and uh, the constant can be pulled outside of the integral. So I'm going to take this 2 and move it out to the front. So if the 2 is out there, then we have 1 over the square root of x dx. Now let's rewrite the radical. This is x to the 1 half power. So this will become 2 times the integral of 1 over x to the 1 half power dx. But this is the same thing as 2 times the integral of x to the negative 1 half power dx. Now we are ready to use the power rule of integration. This rule right here is the one that gets used the most often. If we have x to the n power, to find the antiderivative, we will increase the exponent by 1 and then divide by that new exponent. So we'll bring down this 2 and we will increase the exponent by 1 and that will give us x to the 1 half power and we divide by that new exponent. Up, oh, let's not forget the constant of integration that will always appear when you integrate. Now, when you divide by a fraction, you multiply by the reciprocal. So this will be the same thing as two times x to the one half power plus c. When you distribute the two, you will now have four x to the one half power. And really, you would normally put plus two c, but since c represents a generic constant, uh, 2c is just another generic constant, so we just keep the constant of integration as c. Now, since we started off with radicals, let's go ahead and put radicals back into the final answer and write it as 4 times the square root of x plus c. I'm not going to check all of the answers in this lesson, but I thought we should go ahead and check this first answer to remind ourselves what integration really means. When you integrate, you are finding the antiderivative. That's something that will give you the original function back if you take the derivative. So if we take the derivative of 4 radical x plus c, we should get 2 over the square root of x. So let's take the derivative and see. But first, let's go ahead and rewrite this with an exponent. So uh, 4 times the square root of x is the same thing as 4x to the 1 half power. So when we take the derivative, we're going to do the power rule. So the 1 half is going to come to the front and multiply. So 1 half of 4 is 2, and then we decrease this exponent by 1. 1 half minus 1 is negative 1 half. And if you take the derivative of a constant, that's just 0, so we write nothing. The 1 half power will drop this down to the denominator, so we end up with 2 over x to the 1 half power. And of course, that is the same thing as 2 over the square root of x. Because this is in fact the original function, 
that proves that 4 times the square root of x plus c is the antiderivative. Example 2, find the antiderivative of this function right here. If we were doing the derivative, we would use the chain rule. But we don't have a chain rule for integration. So we actually have to multiply this out the long way. So t squared plus 1 squared is the same thing as t squared plus 1 times t squared plus 1. So we're going to go ahead and multiply this out and turn it into a polynomial in standard form. And then we will be able to integrate. So as we multiply, we get t to the fourth power plus 2t squared plus 1 dt. In this form, we can take the uh, integral of each term separately. So the integral of t to the fourth power, we will use the power rule of integration and increase this by 1, giving us t to the fifth power, and then we divide by that new exponent. And then for the next term, we will keep the constant in the front unchanged, and again, the power rule of integration. We increase this by 1, so now it's the third power, and then we divide by that new exponent. And finally, if you uh, take the integral of 1, you get the variable. So it will just be t. And don't forget the constant of integration. Technically, each one of these terms has its own constant of integration, but let's collect them all together as one constant and just call it c. It's very common to write this as a standard form polynomial with the fractional coefficients in the front. As you look at example three, remember that a plus b over c is the same thing as a over c plus b over c. So this will be the same thing as the integral of x to the third power over x squared plus 3 over x squared. Now when you divide with variables, you subtract the exponents. So we will have x, 3 minus 2 is 1, so x to the 1 power is simply x, and then we will have 3x to the negative 2 power dx. As you integrate, you can integrate each term separately. So first we will use the power rule for the first term. We will increase this exponent by 1 and get x squared, and then divide by that new exponent. And we will also use the power rule on this second term. So first of all, the constant in the front just stays sitting there in the front. And we will go ahead and increase the exponent by 1. When you add 1, you get negative 1. And then you divide by that new exponent. So we divide by that negative 1. And then here comes the constant of integration. So cleaning this up a little bit, we will have 1 half x squared. OK, this negative 1 that we are dividing by We'll make this positive 3 into a negative 3. And then the x to the negative 1 power is going to put the uh, x in the denominator as 1 over x plus c. Or you will probably see it written as simply 3 over x. Take a look at example 4. Let's start by rewriting this radical as an exponent. So we could write this as the integral of x to the 1 3rd power times x minus 4 dx. Now let's do the distributive property. So we will have the integral of x to the 1 3rd power times x minus 4 x to the 1 3rd power dx. Of course, when you multiply variables, you add the exponents. 
and one third plus one is the same thing as one third plus three over three. So that's gonna be four over three. So then we will have the integral of x to the four thirds power minus four x to the one third power dx. So it's time to integrate each term separately. Remember, the uh, power rule of integration says that we will increase the exponent by one, and then we will divide by that new exponent. So if we increase this by one, so we're adding three over three. So that's gonna be seven over three. So we're gonna have x to the seven over three power divided by this new exponent, divided by seven over three. We will leave the constant in the front and do the power rule again. So again, we are increasing the exponent by one. So I'm adding three over three. So this will be x to the four over three power divided by that new exponent of four over three. And don't forget the constant of integration that goes at the end. Now, when you divide by a fraction, of course, you multiply by the reciprocal. So this will end up being three over seven times x to the seven over three power minus, well, we're gonna have four times uh, this reciprocal. So four times three over four, and then x to the four thirds power plus c. And in the last step, these fours will simply cancel out. So we are left with three over seven, x to the seven over three power, minus three x to the four thirds power. Again, the fours cancel out plus c. Let's end this lesson with a trigonometry integral. So we do not have a quotient rule for integration. All we have is this list of basic integration formulas. So for now, we really have to try to make this look like one of those formulas. So let's play around with it a little bit. So this should remind you of when you learn uh, to manipulate identities and make new forms of complex expressions. I see we have this cosine squared in the denominator. What if I split that up as cosine times cosine? So far I have sine x divided by cosine times cosine dx. All right, what if I split this up further uh, what if I group the sine over cosine as a separate fraction? So that would leave me with, okay, so I've got this sine over cosine over here, sine over cosine. Um, I still have this first cosine in the denominator. And since I've put the sine in the numerator on the right-hand fraction, on the left, all I have is a one. So here's what I have so far. Well, one over cosine, that's the reciprocal of cosine, that is secant. And then sine over cosine is another way of writing tangent. Okay, now take a look at your list of basic integration formulas. Do you see this anywhere? All right, take a look right here. We have the integral of secant tangent, and that equals secant x plus c. So here we have this, the integral of secant tangent, and that's going to equal secant x plus C.